start today off, I would love to tell you guys a story. So you guys can close your eyes and imagine, or you can just listen if you'd like. Once there was a dog named Zeke who lived with his owners in inner city Chicago. One day, however, he was in his yard and he got out, and he ran to the nearest park about two blocks away from his house. When he got there, he was met with a few children who really wanted to go see him, and they really wanted to go pet him and stuff, but he wasn't trained when he was little, and he didn't, he like wasn't socialized. So when they ran up to him, he bit the child closer to him. When the child's mother saw this, she was a few yards away. She immediately picked up her phone, called the police for a dog attack, and then ran and helped the child. I can imagine that if I asked the majority of you what kind of dog you thought Zeke was, you can probably say that he wasn't like a small dog. He was even a bigger dog with maybe a worse reputation for aggression, like a pit bull or a doberman. What if I was to tell you that Zeke was actually a five pound chihuahua? So why did you imagine otherwise? As a society, we are constantly being told or reminded that some dogs have a worse reputation for aggression, therefore, they, uh, therefore they're more of a danger. However, I'm here today to tell you that this is not true, that it all depends on the training involved. In order to begin this speech, I need to make myself very clear. I am not here to tell you that you cannot have a fear of larger dogs. Rather, I'm here to tell you that this fear should not be based on aggression. Maybe you had a traumatic experience when you were little, or maybe you're just not a dog person. Either way, in order to properly care for God's creation, it's important to recognize any and all stigmas placed against certain breeds. There is a difference between pet dogs and working dogs. You most likely wouldn't put a poodle in the canine unit of the military. You would probably see a German Shepherd or another dog as such. But why is this? This is not based on aggression, rather based on the understanding and training comprehension and different instincts in the dog. In 2011, when the U.S. Navy SEALs used a Belgian Malinois in their raid to kill Osama bin Laden, uh, people saw this on TV and they were inspired by the dog's raw strength and power. So they went out and bought one. However, they were very ill-prepared for the level of strength and stamina that this dog had, so they couldn't train it properly, to, properly leading to Malinois getting a bad name for themselves. You most likely would not buy a cattle dog for the way it looks. If you live in a New York City apartment, it's not getting proper exercise and not getting to be able to follow through on its natural instincts to herd. This will lead to the dog's energy being released, being released in ways that the owner won't understand. This vanity and carelessness of the owner will 100% lead to the dog's behavior oftentimes being misread in ways of destruction or aggression. This again is not the dog's fault, but rather the owner's for not having the proper resources to fill the dog's natural and instinctual needs. Depriving dogs from their natural instincts oftentimes leads to the value of their life going down and their energy being released in harmful ways both to themselves and others. Cruelty and abuse is a large problem facing the animal kingdom, especially through the way dogs are treated. Whether this be through behavioral training or just treatment in general, many dogs face abuse every day, whether or not the owner or handler means to. One way this is seen is through the method of negative reinforcement and training. When you're trying to train a dog, yet he doesn't understand, the worst thing you can do is hit him. Under, any, under no circumstances should you ever hit him. The dog won't understand why he's getting this punishment. He'll only sense your anger and think that you hate him because he must be doing something wrong. This will then lead to the dog overcompensating for his actions and oftentimes leading to more misread behavior. To avoid this, the integration of positive reinforcement is necessary for both parties to fully understand and communicate well with each other. Earlier this year, I sat through a training session with Heidi Corpella, an expert on the importance of communication through dog training. Through this experience, I learned several valuable lessons and truly understood the importance of the connection needed, not just between the dog and the trainer during training, but rather the trainer and the owner as well. Whether it be through leash walking or training for bite work for police, communication is key. During my interview with Heidi afterwards, she recommended several books to me, including Don't Shoot the Dog by Karen Fryer. Uh, a leading proponent, proponent of clicker training and communication through positive reinforcement. In the self-help manual, Fryer suggests a dive into the psychology behind dog training. One way she does this is by putting on a demonstration to show just how easy it is to train a human and then converting it to dogs. To do this demonstration, she uses her infamous clicker training. 
She picks a volunteer, sends them out of the room, and takes the rest of the audience and tells them to pick a specific sequence of events or pattern that the volunteer needs to achieve in order to pass the test and get the reward. She then brings the volunteer back and proceeds to go on with her demonstration. Every time the volunteer does something good, she receives a click. By doing this demonstration, she demonstrates how little time it can take to train someone using this method of training and positivity as opposed to cruelty through negative reinforcement. Growing up, compassion and empathy has always been a large part of who I was, who I am, and who I want to be. As early as I can remember, I would always care for anything that I came across. Uh, this would come about when I was little and I had to tuck in all my stuffed animals. I would put them all in the bed next to me, make sure they had some pillow, gave them a little bit of blanket, and I was always really sad when I couldn't reach the ones far on the far end, thinking that somehow they felt left out or sad, maybe a little lonely. Fast forward a few months, when during the winter, fast forward a few years, sorry, when I would be making huts for the little bugs during the winter time, so that way they wouldn't get cold and that they would have a shelter from the storms. My heart has always been big for those who need it, so I decided to center my capstone around what it means for me specifically to exercise that compassion and care. As a Christian, I grew up learning about the responsibility humanity has to care for God's creation. Throughout the creation of man in Genesis, several times we read how God has made us in the image of him, in his own image. I also learned that it is part of God's nature to be loving and caring for all of his creation. A great example of this is Genesis 126, which says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image uh, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. This idea of dominion, however, does not entail exercising power or control. Rather, it's the idea of a gardener tending to his garden, or a shepherd tending to his sheep. We are not meant to abuse his power over his creation. Rather, we are meant to cultivate it and take care of it. As someone made in the image of God, the responsibility to care for his creation has been passed on to me along with all of you as well. This has the potential to mean different things for each of us, but for me, it means to fight against some of the cruelty and injustices experienced by animals in ways that are important to me. The people who do not understand why this conversation matters do not understand that the heart of communication and caring for God's creation lies what it means to be made in the image of God. For the Christian, whether or not we are stigmatizing, neglecting, mistreating, or just not understanding any part of creation must matter. I truly believe that refusing to sacrifice an easy way out and putting time and effort into the animal you're training is not doing your best to reflect God's image as we are called to. I'm not saying that we're called to spend thousands of dollars on the best trainers in the world. I'm just saying that it's our duty to care for these animals as God intended and really put the time and effort in to make sure that they understand what we're trying to tell them and that we communicate in a way that both parties will understand each other. After visiting Heidi at Noble Beast Dog Training, I really wanted to approach dog training from a different perspective. So I contacted Chris Pell with Complete Canine Training up in Brighton. While Heidi worked with training pet dogs how to sit and shake, Chris worked with training, uh, with, worked with training working dogs, such as military, police, or personal protection. While both of these trainers had two separate groups, they both echoed one similar viewpoint. Communication is key. Without communication, Chris said, it all falls apart. Without communication, dogs can't get the training that's best for them, and their instincts will be ignored or possibly even cultivated in the wrong direction. This will give them a false stigma of aggression that they may not have had before, or it could increase the stigma against them. Oftentimes, larger dogs do not deserve this label of stigma, uh, this label of aggression, which is called a false stigma. Another trainer I talked to revealed another example of unfair treatment. This trainer's friend had a pit bull, and this pit bull was the sweetest pit bull. She wouldn't even hurt a fly. However, whenever the owner would take her on walks, the, the pit bull was just walking, you know, and then the people on the other side of the street, they would oftentimes cross over, try to get away from the dog as often as they could, or even hide their children. However, since each dog has its own individual with its own, with its own experience, these people probably never experienced anything against this dog that would tell them that it was dangerous. It was just from society telling, that, telling them that it was so. Uh, this dog had never shown any signs of aggression towards them or anyone else, and so when these people started treating him this way, 
the dog got confused, and he didn't know why these people seemed to hate him. So he developed early signs of canine depression. This, uh, this is seen through lethargy or a loss of interest in his favorite things. This led to the owner seeking professional help, and one, uh, one advice given to them was that they buy a bright colored outfit or a bow to put on the dog. So that way, when people saw him on the street, they, would, they wouldn't recognize him as a threat, but rather the opposite. This harmful thinking and stigmatizing against the dog led to stress for him, which could have opened the doors for the stress being, re being released in ways that the owner didn't want it to, through aggression or stress. Uh, in my interview with Heidi and talking to her, this opened my eyes to a possibility of this being a career. She was so helpful during our, during our conversation. She gave me so many resources, ideas, and tips. When she asked me if I had any questions, I couldn't keep up with my excitement, so I kept saying yes, and I kept just talking with her for hours because I, I had so many questions. During this talk, she suggested business or finance classes to help me. This was so exciting to me because that's already what I had kind of been planning on, and then when she said this, it really just pushed me over the edge. Not only did she offer advice during our conversation, she also offered a possible apprenticeship. If you want an apprentice under someone good, it can cost you up to upwards to $5,000 a year. However, with Heidi, she offered one for free. I fell in love with her training style and attitude towards her job, and I decided that she was the one that I needed to help me. With her guidance, I can achieve my goals and maybe do something in life that I have passion for. In my life, I've experienced so many thoughts, ideas, and just notions, but I can't pick up enough motivation to go through with it. However, having this newfound passion has given me that motivation. I really just want to pick up books about training and maybe even shadow some of my classes. I want to dive into my impactful future where I could possibly make, possibly make a change in this world for good. I also want to absorb as much information as possible before I go act on these newfound motivations. Through getting over my fear of talking to new people and really just sitting down with them to get to know the heart of what makes them passionate has given me that motivation to work towards a goal that I didn't have a year ago. Even though I've come so far, I have no reason to stop. My capabilities and potential uh, this summer have a chance to further my knowledge and maybe do some more shadowing. I also want to try maybe more hands-on training. These upcoming months have the potential to be the building blocks of my future if I want them to be. I know that I can learn so much more about myself and fall even more in love with dog training. I also want to do more research on animal behavior and the relationships between humans and animals. I want to explore their similarities and differences and see really what makes them so compatible or so incompatible. I want to expand my boundaries further and learn both about my capabilities as a teacher, yet also a student. Even though this has strayed away from my original capstone proposal, I could not be happier. I have learned so many more things about myself through getting pushed out of my comfort zone. I can't tell you for sure what my future will hold. I can only tell you that I will wholeheartedly enjoy this journey. No matter what happens, I've learned about myself through this experience. Even if it's not what I want it to be, I know I can rest peacefully in the hands of God and trust that he will show me a different way of glorifying him through showing my compassion with an open heart.